Oh. There you have it, these drop, they drop their nippers, but the nippers aren't much good to you anyway, because there's no meat in them. There you go, good feed, freshwater prawns. We'll keep walking down here and we'll get a whole heap of them, a couple fish, and you're in for a pretty good time. Getting a good feed of these giant freshwater prawns, the cherubin. Have a look at where we are. We're down in this tunnel system, massive cave, and the water is just crystal clear. Check it out. We're just cruising through this tunnel system. Yeah, they are. Yeah, see these? Um, probably Varanus Gleba Palmer, black palm rock monitors. Black palm rock monitors. Yeah, so you can see there's a mixture of snake tracks here, and there's also some goanna tracks. You can you can pretty definely see the foot there, and there's the hand and the tail. This spot's always full of life and they come in here for all the bats and things that live in there, in all these caves up in the limestone. Check out this guy, we're just down in a, still down in this tunnel. I just spotted this beautiful young freshwater croc sitting right up here in amongst the rocks in the, sh in the shallow crystal clear water. So I thought I'd just grab him out so we can do a little, a little display on just how beautiful these animals are. And this guy here is probably about three to four years old. It's maybe 1100 long or something, but just under, f I don't know, yeah, probably about that I'd say. And he'd just be in here just feeding on fish Freshwater prawns that I've been catching for my own for my own dinner, and um, probably frogs and whatever else he can catch. So this guy'd be just be passing in and out of this cave system to um, basically just stick with permanent water sources. All right, so we're just gonna let this beautiful little guy go. Oh, he's at my feet. There he is. Right 
Look at him go. So we got the prawns. And we got the fire. Straight on the coals to cook. cooking on there. And we've got the sun coming up around us. It's been a big night. And we'll just let those guys cook away on there. Alright, so they're pretty much ready for the first turn. You can see the one half of them's starting to go orange, or it's gone orange, these smaller ones are done. They're hot. It's like five o'clock in the morning, you can see the sun is coming up. And I'm cooking breakfast, dinner, I don't know what I'm breakfast. cooking. Breakfast, I suppose. So excuse the tiredness, I f***ing am tired. But yeah, we'll leave them on there for a bit longer, cook that other side through, and they'll be good to go. Alright, so a couple of these smaller ones are done. So we'll crack them open while these bigger ones keep cooking. Head off. Get off their shells. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, it's a little bit of meat. Probably the best seafood you'll get out here in the bush. Next one. So the sun's just starting to come up. And these guys aren't quite ready. The coals are really, really burnt down, so they're cooking nice and slow. But I might just go have a quick, quick nap before the sun comes up, and then I'll come back and I'll get into these for brekkie. Hey guys, so we've just been doing a bit of um, road cruising early morning and we managed to find this black-headed monitor, Varanus tristus, just basking on the side of a tree early morning. This guy here is one of Australia's many dwarf monitor species, which means that they only um, they only stay real small. So this guy here is, is an adult male, so he's as, as pretty much as big as the species gets. And um, yeah, he's an arboreal lizard, so they, they live in the trees, in the, in the hollow logs, 
but they also go in the termite mounds and hang around in the rock escarpments. They're opportunistic feeders, so they'll feed on pretty much anything, but out here in this beer grass plains, they'd probably primarily just be feeding on locusts and small lizards, but um, anything that can be anything that can be pursued will be taken down. So whether it's frogs, baby birds, lizards, snakes, um, yeah, pretty much anything. They're pretty savage predators. They're super quick, they're super stealthy. And um, yeah, these guys are, are one of my favorite monitors are my thing so always loved the love the trista since a young age caught plenty of them owned plenty of them never get sick of seeing them every single one you find it's always different you can just see that beautiful coloration down his back he's got a nice light brown head with some speckles a bit of yellow down here in his tail and it just fades out into a black he's lost the tip of his tail somewhere along the way but obviously it's not not affecting him at all beautiful lizard you can see he's a boy he's got these spurs on the side of him which they use to stimulate the female in mating and um, he's also throwing his hemipenes around like that ghoul to us when you when, when I caught when we first caught him but yeah absolutely spectacular lizard I'm just sitting in here in the shade with him because it's hot we had had to catch him so trying not to stress him out too much and um, yeah we're just gonna go go let him go now before before we annoy him anymore so um, yeah, we'll go back here and we'll just film a release and we'll get back into it and hopefully find a couple more reptiles. Another awesome monitor lizard species, oh, there he goes, <laughs> another awesome monitor lizard species on the way to the Parenti. There you go. I'll him on the edge of the stick right there. Oh, he just went inside. Yeah. He just disappeared inside that branch. Check out how amazing this spot is. This is um, Winjana Gorge in the Kimberleys. And just come down here just to oh, have a look around. It's a good spot to see a couple crocs and that. And um, I'm going to have a little dip because it's f***ing hot as f***. And the sand is burning my f***ing feet. So I'm getting straight in this water. So I'm dying. i got to get, put me stuff down. Car keys, phone. In the water. Oh. Have a go at it. So uh, this place here used to be a giant coral reef some 400,000 years ago or some ridiculous number like that. Um, this was in here was the shelf line and so up on top of these big escarpments was where the coral reef was and this is all all limestone cliffs but yeah pretty crazy to think that a place like this with just a, a creek running through one day was a giant reef this was i don't know 100 plus meter deep water all coral up there if you walk around looking on the faces of these of the escarpment walls and if you can get up on top there's heaps of fossils of um of old shells and i don't know like weird things from the dinosaur age it's pretty crazy there was that like now we're just sitting down here what's crazy about this spot is um down here in the dry season um there's the whole, this whole entire river that I'm swimming in now, it dries up and there's basically just a little pool in between those rocks there and around the other side and all the crocs, the freshwater crocs that live up and down this river system, they all have to congregate down here as the river starts drying up through the dry season. So as the, as we stop getting rain, um, the river, the water levels slowly, slowly fall. And as a result of that, the crocs have nowhere else to live. And these crocs will come down, they'll walk down the river, and they'll all sit and they'll congregate in this pool behind me. And you'll come down here, and there'll be two, three hundred crocs sitting in 
in a in this pool and they're in like no bigger than say 100 meters square if that and um they're literally sitting on top of each other they're fighting all the time you can see them feeding and it's just remarkable and then as soon as you get some big rains again the floods come in and it just washes a whole all the river back down and then the crocs will just disperse further down the river and further back up the river to their original territories and they'll live there for the wet season but then as soon as it starts drying up again all the exact same crocs will come back down here all the way down they come hundreds of kilometers down just to um come and stay here in this permanent water source it's pretty it's, it's pretty remarkable to see you can come back and see particular crocs year after year which is a pretty cool thing to do i'll add in a little bit of footage i got from last year where you can see all the crocs as you can see there's just loads of crocs in here There's a big feather on the bank down here. One of the only ones that stayed up is they're usually pretty quick to get back in the water. I'll see how close we can get to him. I thought I heard something. Look at this guy, he's arcing up. So we got this big guy here. He's a bit of a monster. Straight out. living on top of each other, it's crazy. How good are their explosions when they and pump, take off? really is a sight. Hundreds of crocs. There's one in the bank over there. There'll be a couple more up here. Just incredible. This is the lowest I've ever seen this river system. And therefore all the crocs are drawn right into the, just so close together, they're living on top of each other. Must be so much competition for food. going on guys so I've just been driving for the past couple of hours everyone sort of bowed on me and been having a sleep and I've just been cruising around by myself <laughs> Sorry. yeah just sorting it out but um yeah I just spotted this beautiful little spotted tree monitor just sitting on the sitting on the fork of a eucalyptus tree on the side of the road so we pulled over and managed to get a hold of him and um yeah these guys are Another one of Australia's many dwarf monitors. This guy's not fully grown. He's probably, uh, he's a, a young adult, but uh, they put on a fair bit more, fair bit more size than this. He'll bulk up a bit more. And these guys are insectivores, but also will eat lizards and frogs, sort of anything they can get their, get their, get their mouth onto. But I think um, a fair chunk of their diet would probably just be locusts, cicadas, that sort of thing that they're finding up in the trees. 
You can see he's got that beautiful yellow flush on the side of his throat and it runs down behind behind his front leg. These beautiful spots, you can see where he's shedding the, the nice clean pattern on his back and then where it's kind of a bit dirty from the shed. Look, you can peel that off and you can just see the colour difference straight away on it. These are really cool lizards. They're found, they're found the whole way across um, northern Australia from the east coast of Queensland all the way down to about Broome in Western Australia. Um, they're highly variable and there's multiple different species in there in the complex. So um, this guy's Vrana scolaris, but um, all over all over the country there's multiple different lizards that sort of fall under that name. But um, yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful little goannas. Sort of one of the things that I really enjoy finding when I'm out here. So these guys are another arboreal species, just like the Tristus we found earlier. So they're at home in the trees and living in the um, hollow logs and under bark in splits, etc. It's been a hot day, so there hasn't been a whole heap of activity. We're driving through the heat of the day, which is usually one of the better things to do because there's not much else going on really when it's this hot there's nothing out active so um, yeah sort of just kill the day driving and then pull up in the arvo so we can hurt the arvo on the night and usually we're lucky enough to sort of find a couple things on the way which we've just been with this guy it's been pretty pretty poor I haven't seen a great deal while I've been driving but um, hopefully now that we're getting into some nice country and we've had a bit of rain bit of rain about so I, I slowed right down when I seen I seen some um, puddles of water on the side of the road and that so I pulled out I slowed right down so I could really scan the trees as soon as I did that I just spotted this little fella sitting there so paid off and yeah we're just gonna get a couple photos of him and um, yeah we'll get him back So we just, just, um, just, <laughs> so it's, it's been probably, uh, so we've driven about a hundred meters since we pulled over for that Scolaris and we just spotted this beautiful young female frilly just sitting on the shade side of a tree along the side of the road. These guys are insectivores out here just feeding on locusts and stuff. They're another arboreal species so they just live in the trees. Um, she's close to an adult size for a female. The males get a lot larger than this. You can see she's got quite spectacular colours along her frill. She's got nice purples and reds, yellows. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, she's quite defensive. They're always put on a good show for you. That, but you'll find a lot of the time they're all bluff. They just this is all just a big. It's all just mock strikes and charges and things. But when push comes to shove, they don't actually want to bite you. Beautiful lizards, real common, a real common species up here, and um, probably just gonna, probably just gonna get her back quick just before, so we don't keep her out off the tree out of the shade for too long. So, I'm sure we'll see plenty more of them anyway. Another frilly, beautiful adult female. Look at the patterns on her. Oh, anyway, just 
go. Just relax. Hey. Look, there's a tree right there. See it? Hey. Off you go. Come on. There you go. There you go. If I stay lower, maybe you'll. Go on. Up you go.